Hi again, uh, it's Pierre in the shop again. Um, today, that's the trial part for the back plate and the chuck assembly on the six jaw chuck. So I know lots of you have been waiting for a conclusion of this. You've been on the edge of your chair for so long, so it has to come to an end before you bite the rest of your nails. So that's uh, the day the project ends. And uh, hope for a happy ending. And we'll just switch to the late. And then you get to see how we uh, adjust the uh, the chuck and, uh, on its plate. Just bear with me a second and we'll move, uh, we'll move to the late. Before I go on, uh, there's a channel I'm enjoying a lot watching. He's a uh, half machinist, he's a fabricator, welder. I think his main job is uh, welding on the road. He's, in, uh, lo he's located in Kansas and his name is Matthew Walls. Uh, he's got an old Rockford late, I don't know, I guess it must be from the 20s or something like that. And uh, pretty old stuff for machining and things like that. But uh, what I admire the most about this, uh, this particular uh, guy, Matthew, he's uh, creative. He's really creative. He doesn't have like tons of stuff like uh, maybe I might have or other machinists might have. And he's really getting out of there with the solution to his problems, and it's it's nice. I mean, it's it's fun. One of his uh, pet project is um, a trebuchet. I was looking for my, I was looking for the word a trebuchet. He's uh, having a few episodes on that. He's having lots of other projects. So I suggest you uh, you go you go have a look at his channel. And uh, it's called uh, White Vision Metal Fab, and his name is uh, Matthew Waltz. And I enjoyed it, and probably some other people will enjoy it too. So uh, that was my, uh, you know, my, 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 I can't say, in, Fren in French we say uh, mon coup de coeur, you know, like something I liked, something I really appreciated. And uh, other. Other viewers asked me for other, a few questions about the, uh, the bolts or uh, nuts and uh, hardware we use for um, you know, making um, repairs or changing or whatever because on a lots of um, Chinese made stuff, uh, the hardware like the, uh, is, it's poor quality most of the time. They use like you know, cheap stuff to, uh, to really try to maybe cover costs or something. But uh, here we can get some pretty decent stuff. I'm going to show you a few examples of what we get. Uh, this is some of the uh, metric bolts I got from uh, the, uh, I think it's Fastenal, the, the supplier around here. And uh, they're very, very nice quality. They're made in Taiwan. Uh, instead of mainland China, usually it's a sign for a better quality. And uh, I'll take one out. And show you close, if I can have this thing focus. Okay, I'll just try to give it lots of surface to focus on. Okay. See the quality of the uh, Okay, we're getting to see something. It's not exactly super 100% clear, but uh, the quality of the bottom, the uh, the boat, the head, the um, finishing on this, even the treads. So far, I've been happy with those, and they're nice, uh, nicely like a stable quality. You know, you order one. One day, and if you order something like a few months or a year later, you get something nice too. And I got another supplier, which uh, I don't think you'll be able to get that all over the planet, but uh, this guy, 
they're uh, supplying me with very good qualities supposedly made in China but I mean you know China can be uh, Taiwan and things like that but uh, they're they're nice uh, nicely made too I'll just get one these are uh, zinc plated Uh, not the same same type of uh, quality in the head very uh, very nicely done they're you know cleanly done and everything it's a uh, as a matter of price this guy is about uh, is about one of the best I had around a box like that with a hundred of those would cost me about uh, 62 bucks something like that in Canada here so it's uh, it's a very decent price and uh, the quality is very 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 nice okay now I've installed the chuck and the late it's uh, not adjusted so it means um, it has run out. Well, I turned a piece of uh, 1045 here. This is the piece. Okay, we'll be using this part here from here to there. This is um, this has been turned and true and uh, verified as uh, it's true. Like uh, all around, there's a uh, one tenth of a thousand about that could be. Uh, Maybe slightly off this part here. It's just I don't want to. Just don't want to really cut it for, for no re reason for now. But let's check this in. Um, I'll check it in at least over a, a good inch. Okay, that's tight enough. And uh, the three bolts here, the mounting bolts here. I kind of uh, untight a little bit. They're snug. Uh, if uh, you try to make them as equal as possible, because if you tend to make one more, uh, you know, more tight on one side, then this will get this will give you some kind of a, you know, like actual uh, actual movement. And I want the least possible for uh, for the late. And since. Um, the actual movement would be kind of near the plate here. We're kind of far, let's say the distance from here to there is about, I don't know, uh, six, seven inches. So if you make something axial with a center there, I mean, it means that this at the end here will give you lots of, uh, lots of movement. So that's why I'm trying to keep it uh, as tight as possible and still allow the movement like a uh, up and down and uh, like the, the uh, X you know X and Y directions for the uh, this so uh, I'm gonna start using a, a one uh, one thousand indicator first and uh, once, once we're kind of much closer uh, we'll go to a one tenth of a thousand uh, indicator so let's go for this uh, I'll try to I'll try to center this as as well as possible. It give me a, give me a moment here. It won't be long. I'll try to get the height as as near as possible to the center of the uh, the part. So we measure the outmost outside part there. That's what we want to. That's the goal. Okay. Let's, uh, oops, tight this up. Hope it clears. Yes, we're clearing the handle there. Okay, if this is solid. Uh, okay, let's go. We'll, uh, I think you can see, I think you can see. Hope so, because on the, on the camera viewfinder, I mean, it's not the most precise thing, but uh, Okay, we'll preload about, uh, I don't know, uh, 50,000 or something, or that would be, uh, that would be good enough. Okay, I got a zero there, and uh, we'll see what, uh, what kind of run out we get. We get, uh, okay, everything's in place now. 
we're getting oh boy uh, five plus getting about thirty thousands of run out which is we're getting thirty thousands of run out be it um, eventually the run out will be the uh, center position will be mostly near the middle of this so let's place it there and uh, okay now that's slow let's move uh, just a I'm gonna untie it. it's the same principle as a, a four jaw chuck so The other side, sorry. So you bring it near the center of the offset. Loosen up a little bit this. A little bit more here. Okay, center is near where the zero is. Let's get the uh, this here. It's getting a little tighter. It's gonna end up like a little bit like you you tighten a uh, four jaw chuck. You get uh, get this thing like tight enough so it on the central hub. Uh, when you really get these things uh, going, it doesn't move. So we're like within the thousand now. I'll give it just a tiny little bit on this one. A little bit there. Okay, half thousand there. We're about uh, a few tenths. Uh, now we want to control the work better. I'm going to be using a tent indicator. Okay, now we're back. Uh, I just installed a tenth, uh, tenth of an inch indicator. Uh, make sure everything repeats, everything's stable. Because uh, tenth indicator seats, you don't, you don't play with it too much, and it's just like a, it will, it will play tricks on you. Uh, from the 1000 indicator before we're about um, I would say a little bit more than two tenths off from uh, being perfectly centered uh, now it's not going to be just like uh, no say oh we're that close we're you know like the, the last uh, the last tent is sometimes much harder to uh, to gain than the the first hundred so uh, we're gonna be playing on tension this uh, these screws are pretty tight now and uh, doesn't take much to go like pretty far from what we are now so um, we're, we're gonna try not to untighten those just by tension we're gonna try to gain that extra thousand but uh, it's not exactly simple. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it is not. So, I'm moving still about two thousand to uh, two tenths, two tenths of an inch. Sorry, it's not. Let's say it's not far, but it's not there yet. We're a little bit over a tent. It's like I say.
um, just within a tent but uh, I might just screw it up but just let's try this a little bit more tension uh, We're at 10. I'll, uh, I'll take you closer. And uh, I think you want to see that too. Just bear with me a second. Uh, <clears throat> let me get stable. And let's go. That's what I call about a tent. And you can read on the meter and the uh, indicator itself that's a uh, one ten thousandth of an inch. I think we're uh, we're pretty good. The uh, that uh, I think that project came out nice and uh after that I'll do some mounting and dismounting so you can see that we might go off a little bit because mounting and dismounting the part from the uh, <clears throat> chuck there you might get a you know maybe I don't know three four five thousand tenths I mean sorry I'm always talking about tents here uh, y you get a few tenths off so uh, the purpose of that chuck will be to uh, really get things very close if you need to uh, you know like adjust stuff for particular projects or something like that you can get like within a few tenths and uh, make your uh, your project faster than if you have to go with a four jaw chuck which you can get the same kind of precision but it takes much longer to adjust this one you just mount uh, dismount your part you're within uh, let's say two or three tenths or some maybe four tenths at the most and you can just like uh, go on like that and if the uh, the project requires that kind of precision then you're uh, you're well off you're you're going fast okay let's uh, keep up with the mounting and dismounting I'll show you okay as mentioned uh, a few seconds earlier uh, I mounted and it dismounted the part and I told you that we'd get maybe a little bit of run out. This is one... Okay, let's get closer. And let's get stable. This is one mount and this mount. I'd say we're within maybe two to three thousandths of an inch tenths two to three tenths of, an thou of thousands which is for uh, just any chuck it's uh, I mean it's it's pretty pretty good so that's after mounting and dismounting work let's say there are not many chucks that can turn like you you take off the part put it back in there and you're uh, within uh, two or three tenths if you try that on your uh, Three jaw chuck, you'll be uh, you'll be in for a surprise. Like maybe more like two to three, two to three, even four or five thousands of certain chucks. So that's uh, the kind of result you can obtain with these uh, these chucks. That's why they're uh, they're made and they're uh, I think they're they got their use. Oh, uh, back to uh, back to new projects now.